I help you? Hey, what are you doing up? Don't you keep your eggs in the fridge? Oh, well, I can if it's important to you. Well, I suppose I could learn to cook them at room temperature, if that's what you like. Oh, if this is how we're going to solve all our domestics, I think we've got a very long future together. Good. Fried or scrambled? Oh, no, I couldn't eat a cooked breakfast today. Oh, right, cereal, then. Where do you keep that? In the fridge? <laughs> I'm going to get ready for work. Uh, no, no, you don't have to. Peter, I can't... No, I've spoke to Michelle. She's going to cancel all your appointments in the diary for today. Not the meeting with Jenny Sumner. Yeah, she'll just say that you're ill. Peter, you can't just do that. Listen... She will have heard about the trial. Everybody has. I've already cancelled on her once. Listen, if I don't show today, she's going to think I've either had a meltdown or I'm a liar. Carla, look, you need to rest no, a day off. No, what I need is that contract. I'm not going to let the factory go under because of what Frank's done. That nearly happened last time. It can't happen now. OK. <sighs> look, I'm already late. I've really got to go. Please, I need help putting that washing line on. I'm sorry, but I'm already late, Katie. Cheers! Well, ask Fizz. She'll help you. Fizz is gone. She's took hold to the childminders. I'm sorry. Come on, babe. I want to see it before everyone starts talking about me. Why, are you famous? Haven't you left the house? I feel like one of those baby calves are keeping crates so the light doesn't get to them. As in veal? I think calves are cows, not veals. What does he say? You know what, actually, don't tell me. I'd rather enjoy the blissful ignorance a little while longer. I can't have one at work. Can't believe it. They made me out to be a right perv. Build a boyfriend of Rosie Webster the face of Weatherfield road safety campaign, was caught laying more than bricks on Friday. What's that supposed to mean? You know, if Owen sees this, he'll know we lied about the dent in the van. He'll proper kill me, Rosie. <gasps> no, not that picture! What, is that the one for when John's steak, isn't it? Oh, my hair! How are they going to cut your house in half? It's dead small. They won't, stupid. Hey, that's enough. Your dad hates your mum, that's why they've cut up your house. But well, my mum's coming home soon, ain't she, Grandma? Look, uh, just help me, will you, sweetheart? Carry the jam and the butter into the kitchen for me. I asked you a question! Hey, Amy. Amy's stupid. Oi! Now, will you go upstairs and get your gym things, please? Ah! Oh. Ah! You know, I hope he's not taking things out on Amy. Nah, no, he's fine. L lovey, will you go upstairs, please, and clean your teeth? Oh. You know, I'm going to have to have a word with Peter. He can't just dump Simon here. That is different. I am trying to make my marriage work. Peter has brought this on himself. Well, the last I heard, you were threatening to phone the council to force Steve to take his ridiculous wall down. Uh, yeah. Well, how is that helping your marriage? Because it will force him to be in the same room as me again. Don't you think you'd be better off persuading him rather than forcing him? You're just going to drive him further away. He couldn't be further away. When he said those vows to me, ma'am, he meant it. I could see it in his eyes. Why can't he just remember that and want that again? Remind him. Tell him. Find a way to make him listen. What? How? Ask him nicely. Have a seat. Uh, coffee, tea? How about the elephant first? The elephant in the room? Let's deal with that before we deal with anything else, eh? As in the trial and the verdict. Oh, that elephant. Mm. OK. I assume you have heard. Well, it's a very small community we work in. Mm -hmm. Look, whatever the jury said, doesn't really matter. Frank's still Can guilty. I make this easier for you? Sorry to interrupt. I might not know you well, but I've known you a long time. And you don't strike me as the sort of woman who'd make something like that up. They said it was about getting him out of the factory. Well, no offence. If I'd heard you tried to buy him out, freeze him out, even hit him over the head with a hammer, I'd be tempted to believe it. But falsely accusing him of that. Thank you. <clears throat> Last time I saw you, you were holding it together, but I could tell how traumatised you were. Oh, well, I guess I won't be getting that Oscar, then. Well, she always thinks she can fool everyone, so... Well, I'll give you an Oscar if you manage to look affronted by the unit price I'm going to propose. <laughs> hmm. So, elephant tick. Should we move on to coffee? Please, yeah. Why now, sugar, please, for both. I remember that meeting. After it happened? Mm. You know, I thought I got away with it. 
brought her in all these fabric samples. She kept asking me for zingy colours. <laughs> zingy! <laughs> I remember looking out that window right across Manchester and thinking I could quite happily stab her with her letter open. <laughs> But her blood's a zingy colour. <laughs> and you wondered how she spotted you weren't right. Look, she believes you, that's the main thing, eh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get dressed in the dark this morning? I'm not dressed in pyjamas. I've got me jeans on. What do you take me for? Just not had a shower, that's all. Most people have a shower first before they come to the pub. Most people don't shower in the pub. It's all right, I know where everything is. I did used to live in. Hey, wait up! Did Carl and Stella know? I rang Carl. And? Oh, not had a reply yet. Well, Sunita, it's not my fault. Our bathroom's upstairs and I live downstairs. You've not thought this through, have you? This whole living with Tracy thing. Oh, I have, and it's getting to her, definitely. Listen to this. You are cordially invited to a clear the air lunch. Tracy has never cordially done anything in her life. She doesn't even know the meaning of the word cordially. She's rattled. So, are you going to this lunch then? In her dreams. No, in fact, I am going to delete this. She's not even going to get a reply. So, what's the hurry for the shower then? Well, it's not for her. Good grief. It's for my own self respect. <laughs> Men with self respect don't come to the pub in their pajamas. I'm going to phone Stella. Steve? Apparently, she started turning up with support meetings. <coughs> what, for his drinking? So you think that was a coffee for the affair? Well, it'd be a bit odd otherwise, wouldn't it, turning up? She likes a glass of wine, Mrs Connor. Well, if that qualifies her as an alcoholic, they'll have to start a group at the Rovers <laughs> for us lot. Yeah. When they say someone's left a vehicle in a dangerous position, does that mean it's a vehicle that's in a dangerous position or that Rosie and Jay somewhere? What? You're not still on your break. Come on, when Mrs. Connor walks back in here, what she needs us to be is behaving as normally as possible. <laughs> Mr. Foster. Hello, Haley. How do we manage with twice as many machines, eh? Just close the gaps. Yeah, Sally, could you? Does, does Mrs. Connor know that you're here? Yes, Mr. Foster. Julie, you grab that end. No! You can't start shifting things about. I'm supervisor. I'm supervisor. Right, well, you supervise all your machines being squashed up, and when ours arrive, I'll supervise them filling in again. Uh, excuse me, does Mrs. Connor know you're here? Like Zygon there is the radiator. It's my circulation. Your mum's varicose veins were that lumpy, she swore the spelt her name out in Vail. Who's that, Beth? Oh, Mrs. Connor is not gonna like this. Page 12 is missing. I have a good mind to go round and demand my money back from Norris. And my money, to be accurate. Well, selling an incomplete newspaper must be a crime under some Trades Act. It's as likely that one of our customers has torn an article out, something of interest, or perhaps that has offended. Oh, Milton! Right, Roy, yes. Now, I don't want you to say another word. I promise you, don't say one word, all right? Every man has ambition, right? But he also has pride to. No, don't, wait, don't, don't say another word now. Now, this is the business plan, and this is the purchase plan, and this is the architect's view of the knock through. You knock see. through? Yes, I'm going to buy the place and explore. I'm going to take out the dividing wall, and then Roy and I are going to be partners at Beef and Counter. And it's not going to cost you a single little cent, or a penny, or a pence, or whatever they're called. All right. Now, Roy. Listen to me. I want you to absorb this and think it through, and then we'll discuss it. Because this is future proof. Now, trust me, I have done the math, and it is A OK, -OK all right? Good. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> oh, isn't he the most sensitive, perceptive, passionate man it has ever been your privilege to clap eyes on? Thank you. Cheers. I bet they can have a breathe in there with all that gossip. There'll be no oxygen. <laughs> Don't we have a word first? Oh, no, they won't dare say out from the face, will they? Especially now we've got this contract of Jenny Sumner's to wave in front of them. Job security, anyone? Overtime. Hmm. They'll be fighting over who makes your first brew. Mm. Oh, I love being boss. Hmm. Good to see you smile. Hey, my life might be one unholy mess, but we've got this place cooking on gas. I've got Peter in my bed. All I have to do now is imagine Frank Foster never existed and life might be worth living again. Mm. Oh, Mrs. Connor, Mrs. Connor, would you like get hold of you both? What's up? Mr. Foster's here. Oi, 
The thing is, I didn't Never even... Never mind about picking that up. I shall have the time to open it. Was still short of plaster. Ring any bells, eh? That little errand you were meant to be on when you were playing bumper cars with the van on Friday. Yeah, boss, that was an accident. Yeah, I... which is why I'm driving. Keeping my hands on the steering wheel might stop me from taking a swing at you when Kevin gives me a price for knocking out those dents. Come on. Joking. Nice to meet you too. Hello, Carla. What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, my other premises aren't as good, so why on earth would I stay there? Shame. You've cost Frank a lot of money forcing him out of here. He ought to be suing you. It's okay, Mum. Look, I'm sure we all agree we need to think forwards, not backwards. Guilt difficult to live with, is it? And I'd call off the dogs if I were you. We don't want anyone sued for slander. Though you're more of a Yorkshire Terrier than a Rockweiler. Oh, no, no, no. You don't come into my factory and insult my staff. And you're not thinking straight, Carla. You don't even need to call your solicitor on this one, do you, really? I certainly will. What do you think she's going to say? Look, you probably need a bit of space before we talk it through. And there's still stuff to do at the old place, isn't there? Not least the cleaning. Yeah. Looked like a bomb had hit it. Well, that would have done us all a favour. Shall I keep an eye here? No, you come with me, Sally. I'm sure Carla can keep this place ticking over. You choose the desk. Just clear out the drawers on the one that's mine. Excuse me. Right, call your solicitor. This is harassment, right? I'll be a witness. He can't just Michelle, come in just and... shut up, I need to think. Well, you can't work with him. No, of course I can't. I can't be in the same room as him. Right, so ring your solicitor. <sighs> the, the jury found him not guilty, they... They called him innocent. What rights do you think I've got left? So what are you going to do? Hi. Uh, Tracy's phone's acting up. Uh, she was just wondering if you got a text. Ah. Oh. Interesting fan package she's got. What is it? 600 minutes unlimited text and a mother that does her dirty work for her. She doesn't get a reply. I take it you got her invitation. Fully enough, I'm just getting ready. Oh. Yeah, to do something far more interesting, like bang me head against the corner of the cabin for an hour and a half. Will you stop being so childish? Tracy just wants you both to move on. For Amy's sake. Oh, believe me, if it weren't for Amy, I would be moving on. Far away from her whining, selfish, ugly face. Oh, sorry, faces. Both of them. He's so dead. I know, they're annoying, aren't they? They're just like tellies in pubs. Once they catch your eye, you can't stop staring at them. <laughs> oh, he is amateur, then. I'm the third old. We should let it spin. You owe me 85 pence. What for? I found my paper in the office bin with tea bags soaking through it. I should buy another one. All right, so as I thought it was an old one. 85 pence. Ta. Oh, yeah, and you're sacked. Hey. Company vehicle, company time. Not to mention the damage. I pay you for some filthy work, Jason, but not this. Uh, boss, that was an accident. Owen. My agent has threatened to dump me. But I need to catch you. No, I need to speak to you. They have dropped me from the road safety campaign and they are threatening to sue for the cost of a reshoot. She said that she was this close to dumping me. Rosie. And when she said it on the phone, I could just tell by her voice that she was doing this with her fingers. Rosie, I've just been sacked. And this is your fault. Hey. You know, if they sue me, you are paying. I said I've been sacked. Oh! We should barricade ourselves in while Frank's not here. We all clearly suggest it. She's only gone to what for him a coffee. Oh, smoke screen, Kurt. She's our eyes and ears. Oh, right, so I didn't need to put the kettle on. What did they say? <sighs> Nothing but Mrs. Connie looked less rabbit in the headlights, eh? Oh, well, that's summer. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you've got some information, this affects all of us, so come on, spill. If I'm honest, Eileen, I'm disappointed that you've allowed yourself to be part of this storming of the place thing. Storming? 
forgetting I came on the Wayfarer. And if you have to pick in on her gob face, you'll be picking on me. Oh, she's my sister. We are honest with each other. And we're mates. That counts more than family. Ridiculous! Oh, trap shot, gobby mare. Hey, do, do you know what, Beth? Just turn the heat down. Yeah, let's keep it civilised, eh? It's hard enough. Bet you're glad you don't look like her. She likes some fancy dress costume with the girls well dead. Oh, oh right. no, don't let her wind you up. Is everything all right? Uh, yes, yes, people are just a bit tense, understandably. We just want to know what's happening. Yeah, nothing from what I can see. If Mrs Connor's staff are down tooling, we should just use their machines till ours arrive. I appreciate it's a stressful time. I'll speak to Carla. It might be best if you go home, come back tomorrow when things are a little bit more settled. <laughs> Looks ominous. Sally, could you come in, please? Oh, you don't need your lap dog. Oh, that Yorkshire Terrier comment really stung, didn't I? I apologise unreservedly. I think it's best all round if we each have a witness for our conversations. Avoids any misunderstanding. You mean false accusations? I've worked out a temporary strategy, at least for the next few weeks, while we work out the best way forward for the business. Ooh, sounds sensible. Let's not pretend we want to work together long term. We want the business to work long term, is that different? Totally. Right, we start with the office. You picked your desk? No separate offices. What, a dividing wall? We build a temporary office. We could. We could construct one directly opposite so no one gets the better view. What, on the shop floor? There'll be space once we've rationalised the staff. Don't worry. You don't decide about shedding staff? No, simple economics decides, Carla. We've both taken on extra workforce. There will be redundancies, inevitably. My workers stay. My workers are entitled to the same loyalty that they showed me. Oh, it's touching. I'm serious. And you know my contracts are my contracts. Why don't I get us all a coffee? It looks like it's going to be a long afternoon. You can let them go, Sally, those who want to. Don't want any more fights. I think you can go, girls. He is not going to wind me up. He is not going to wind me up. the pictures wanted us all off early so he could repaint all the lines and I said that I'd give him an hand. Oh, cheers. Well, he's paying. Yeah, well, what about Joseph? I wanted to go and see Izzy when she finished work. Take him. Or ask Fizz to look after him. Fizzy's working. He's your son too, you know. Of course I know. I'm trying to support us. That's why I need to work. Fine. Well, Kate, eh? Look, I can manage if you want to go up to the flat to talk pounds and pence. Or should I say, talk cents. <laughs> no, I see where you're going there. <laughs> now, Milton, please do not say a single word. All right, I, I like your symmetry. Now, right? now, I afforded you that courtesy. Please, as far as you find it possible, try to keep your mouth shut. Right. And, that, and you, Mother. I will not be talked to like that. No, 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 no. let him have his say. I haven't looked at your supporting documentation. Nor have I attempted to reimagine my business. Because when I said to you that I do not wish to pursue your proposal, I meant it. Well, Brian, you know, look at that canoe. Milton, I have what I need. I have everything that I desire. So you will not use your own ambition and your inability to stop showing off in front of my mother to try and make myself and my business into something that I and it are not. So my answer 
once again is no. Never. And I will thank you not to interfere anymore. Oh, uh, but, uh, by the way, in this country, it is maths. Not math. Math, sir. I will never do business using math. Well, thank you for the English lesson. It's not a trick question. We both need to know exactly how much business we have to work with, particularly if, as you say, you want to keep some of your staff. No, all of my staff. Orders. Mm-hmm. Yes. What about Jenny Sumner? We pitched for that contract ourselves. And I saw in your diary... Sorry, that sounds like I invaded your privacy. I saw in the office diary that you had a meeting with Jenny this morning. I could call her. I won that contract. It stays with me. There's no I or me here now, Carla. It's we. We're partners again, just like before. This isn't going to work. I admit it scores high on degree of difficulty, but I like a challenge. I usually get my own way eventually. Oh, you know this can't work. You know damn well. You just want to drive me out. No. No. Buy you out. I had a feeling you might react like this, so I prepared you an offer. Now this is a today-only price. Take it or leave it, but if you don't want to work with me, I suggest you take it, because I'm not going anywhere. And we'll be back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>